GC Divest is a student group at Goshen College who are calling for Goshen College to completely divest its endowment from fossil fuel and mineral extraction companies. If you don't know what divestment is, think about it as the opposite of investment. Instead of investing in fossil fuel and mineral extraction companies, GC Divest wants Goshen College to divest their money from these companies and instead invest in sustainable companies. Before we discuss what divestment would look like at Goshen College, let's take a look at why divestment is important. Let's start by asking the questions, what problems will divestment solve, and what are the root causes of those problems? GC Divest believes that the most pressing matter humanity now faces is climate change. At the United Nations Cancun Accord of 2010, scientists, world leaders, and governments agreed that the planet's average temperature must not increase by more than 2 degrees Celsius. Failure to meet this goal would result in catastrophic environmental, social, and economic consequences. Climate change is such a widely known problem, so why isn't enough being done to combat it, and what role can divestment play in fighting climate change? To answer these questions, we have to look at some of the driving forces behind the problem. We will take a look at the economics, the culture, the evolutionary biology, and education surrounding climate change and divestment. Let's start with economics. In this section, we will try to answer three main questions. Just a quick note, this section will look primarily at economics in regards to fossil fuels and not as much mineral extraction. So the three questions that we're going to look at are, first, why does Goshen College currently invest in fossil fuel companies? Second, what role do fossil fuel companies play in the larger economy? And third, why might divestment be a financially smart move? So let's start with number one. Why does Goshen College invest in fossil fuel companies? In order to answer this question, we first have to understand Goshen College's endowment. Goshen College has an endowment that totals $117 million. Of that $117 million, $86 million is part of the Mennonite Educational Agency, or MEA's, endowment. Another $22 million is in a Mary Lee endowment, $3 million is invested in Elkhart and Noble County, and the remaining $6 million is spread amongst various organizations and scholarships, including the C. Henry Smith Fund. GC Divest is focused on the $86 million that is part of MEA's endowment. The MEA endowment totals $155 million, meaning that Goshen's $86 million is over half of the endowment, with the remaining funds coming primarily from other Mennonite colleges. GC Divest believes that because Goshen College has a majority of the money in the MEA endowment, Goshen College also has the power and the responsibility to push for divestment. The MEA endowment is currently in a socially responsible fund created by the faith-based financial company Everance. This means that Everance has screens and refuses to invest in several areas, such as pornography and weapons manufacturing. While Everance does have qualitative screens for both environmental concerns and human rights, GC Divest believes that these screens don't go far enough. While GC Divest applauds Goshen College, the MEA, and Everance for engaging in stewardship investing, the question remains. Why does Goshen College currently invest in fossil fuel and mineral extraction companies? The answer is that it is a way to make money. Every year, that $117 million endowment contributes $2 million to the school's operating costs. Those $2 million come from the returns earned by the investment, and therefore they don't actually decrease the endowment's overall funds. Goshen College Vice President for Finance, Jim Histon, describes the endowment as, quote, designed to be a long-term investment and in perpetuity. GC Divest recognizes the importance of maintaining a stable endowment so that the college can continue to provide a vibrant campus community for its students, staff, faculty, and the greater city of Goshen for years to come. We just ask that we do it without investing in fossil fuel or mineral extraction companies. Now let's take a look at question number two. What roles do fossil fuel companies play in the larger economy? The economic system used in the United States is capitalism. For capitalism to work, there needs to be growth, and growth is dependent on cheap energy, often in the form of fossil fuels. Writing in 2010, Daniel Lurch predicted that we will hit peak oil by 2015 if we hadn't hit it already, meaning that soon our cheap energy won't be so cheap. And without access to cheap energy, all other sectors of the economy slow down. If the price of oil goes up, so does the price of everything else. Retired 30-year CIA analyst Tom Whipple puts it this way, 
quote, any increase in the demand for oil caused by improving economic conditions will cause much higher prices, which will in turn choke off the economic upturn. The problem with the model of endless growth is that we live on a planet of finite resources. Eventually, the price of oil will go up. University of Vermont professor Joshua Farley puts it this way, quote, the economic system is sustained and contained by the finite planetary ecosystem, so continuous exponential growth of physical economic production is impossible. A sustainable economy cannot extract renewable resources faster than they can regenerate, use up critical non-renewable resources faster than renewable substitutes are deployed, or emit wastes faster than they can be absorbed. So in conclusion, fossil fuels play an essential role in our economy, but our addiction to them could spell our downfall now that peak production is most likely behind us. And this leads us to question number three. Remember that earlier scientific report that said that a two degree rise in temperatures would be catastrophic. A report in Nature says that over half of the known fossil fuel reserves must remain in the ground in order for warming to remain below two degrees Celsius. According to research done by HSBC, stock markets do not take these constraints into consideration when valuing fossil fuel companies, implicating many of the world's investments and putting them at risk for collapse the so-called carbon bubble. This means that investments in fossil fuels will become stranded assets if policy is finally changed to keep the oil in the ground. Therefore, it is economically advantageous for Goshen College and the MEA to remove their investments from overvalued fossil fuel stocks ahead of the financial crisis that will occur when the carbon bubble bursts. Now let's move on to the second root of the problem underlying climate change, because after all, it is unfair to discuss economics without also discussing one of the main driving forces behind economics, culture. In Western culture, there is a tend to maximize. More shopping, more driving, more food, more stuff, more, more, more. This attitude of more is in direct contradiction to nature. Whereas culture tends to maximize, nature tends to optimize. There is a balance in nature. It is a cycle. But in Western culture, no such balance exists. We always need more, and we can't stop. According to a 2014 report from NerdWallet, the average American household has an average credit card debt of $15,000, an average mortgage debt of $155,000, and an average student loan debt of $32,000. These numbers are astounding and dangerous, because not only does our culture say more, 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 it also says me, me, me. According to professor of psychiatry and biobehavioral science at UCLA, Peter Weibrow, taking on debt is only one of the ways that we pay for more. We also work longer hours, sleep less, take fewer vacations, and neglect our families. In the words of Tyler Durbin from the movie Fight Club, we are working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. Unfortunately, we aren't the only ones hurt by our addiction to more. The stuff we buy has to be made somewhere, out of materials extracted from somewhere else. The human rights and ecological damage of more is astounding, but it is often invisible to us. Our brains tell us that it is bad for us to use more oil, but our culture says buy, buy, buy. Of course, while culture has predominantly led to environmental degradation in the name of self-interest, it can also be a source for good. Goshen College's motto is culture for service, and the college has engaged in many different projects to try to improve sustainability and become carbon neutral here on campus. GC Divest wants to see this culture of sustainability extend to the investment strategy for the endowment. Now let's move on to the third root cause. Much how it is difficult to look at economics without looking at culture, it is also difficult to look at culture without looking at evolutionary biology. Perhaps we should start with the definition. Professor of Psychiatry and Biobehavioral Science at UCLA, Peter Weibrow offers up this way of thinking about evolutionary biology as it relates to the climate crisis. Quote, as creatures of the natural world having evolved under conditions of danger and scarcity, we are, by instinct, reward-seeking animals that discount the future in favor of the immediate present. So why is this important? Well, as University of British Columbia professor William Rees points out, as we were evolving, quote, natural selection would favor those individuals who are most adept at satisfying their short-term selfish needs. 
This history makes it hard for humans to comprehend complex issues like climate change because climate change takes place on such a grand scale in terms of both time and space. It also means that unless we directly feel the impacts of climate change ourselves, we are unlikely to do anything about it. It also means that to improve prospects for humanity, it is necessary to override those evolutionary behaviors that have now become maladaptive in this new world of scarcity. Professor William Rees goes on to say that, quote, to reestablish cognitive consonance between ingrained perceptions and new environmental realities requires the effective parties engage in willful restructuring of their belief system and associated neural pathways. While this won't be easy, it is possible for humans to switch from a competitive nature to a more cooperative nature. Now let's look at the fourth key issue behind the environmental crisis, education. Whenever discussing climate change in any capacity, it is important to look at education. A 2014 Gallup poll found that only 57% of Americans believe in man-made global warming. Unfortunately, our legislature is possibly even worse. Watch the chair of the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works, James Einhoff, try to debunk climate change on the Senate floor. The chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. At Goshen College, climate change is much more likely to be accepted as fact, but there is still a lot of confusion over what exactly divestment is. On February 14th of this year, 2015, GC Divest held an educational event for Goshen College students, faculty, and community members to try to clear up some of that confusion. GC Divest believes that it is important to not only understand what divestment is, but also its place in history as a tool for social change. A study by researchers at Oxford University and Bloomberg New Energy Finance found that, quote, in almost every divestment campaign, from adult services to Darfur, from tobacco to South Africa, divestment campaigns were successful in lobbying for restrictive legislation. In the last several years, the fossil fuel divestment movement has gained significant momentum as colleges all across the nation are starting to divest. Pitzer College was one of them. Head of the Pitzer Board of Trustees Investment Committee Donald Gold explains why the college decided to divest from fossil fuels. He said, quote, The college has competing priorities. The endowment is only one of them. My argument was that the importance of aligning our actions with our values as an institution had to take precedence in this case. GC Divest believes that raising awareness about the past and current use of divestment as a tool to bring social change helps build momentum and increase pressure on Goshen College and the MEA to make a change. Now that we've addressed four of the root causes behind climate change and how they relate to divestment at Goshen College, it is time to look at one more important aspect that until now has been left out. Faith. Goshen College is a Mennonite institution and Mennonites are called to live our lives as examples of God's peace. GC Divest believes that fossil fuel and mineral extraction companies are inherently violent and it is therefore theologically and morally wrong to be invested with them. Furthermore, Goshen College holds itself to five core values. Christ-centeredness, compassionate peacemaking, passionate learning, global citizenship, and servant leadership. As part of the servant leadership core value, Goshen states, Quote, we humbly set aside self-interest for the interests of others, leading in the strength of love given by God. Goshen College describes compassionate peacemaking by saying, quote, We are committed to build the peaceable kingdom by practicing loving kindness, restoring justice, practicing anti-racism, loving our enemies, and advocating for the dispossessed. We renounce the oppressive, violent, destructive powers of this world and are willing to live our lives as examples of God's peace. GC Divest believes in and upholds the core values of Goshen College. We only ask that the institution does as well. Two, one. GC Divest!